so uh, i welcome you all to my channel it was a very long time okay uh, i haven't made any video so today we uh, today's video is going to be about a historical topic and the topic is when we are talking about the modern empire so what are the major sources we should need to remember or we should keep in our minds when we are talking about the modern empire so modern empire is a very great empire and uh, uh, we can say that it was the starting of the centralization of India. Okay, as historians suggest that it was the starting of the centralization of power in India. So when Chandragupta Maurya, that was the first ruler, uh, first I am introducing the topic. The topic of today's video is obviously the Mauryan Empire. So how it got started? Let's take a view on that. So when Chandragupta Maurya, who was accompanied by Chanakya, Chandragupta Maurya, his origin was a bit controversial between historians. Some historians believe that he was uh, from a Maurya clan who, uh, who were living in the uh, hilly areas. Some historians do believe that he was uh, the son of a Shudra woman who lives in the court of the last Nanda ruler. Okay. I hope to this point I am clear. Okay. So when Chandragupta Maurya, his origin is controversial to historians. Okay. Who has, who was accompanied by Chanakya, also known as Vishnu Gupta, also known as Kautilya, overthrew the last Nanda ruler. Okay. We all know, we all know that Chandragupta Maurya was the first king of the Mauryan Empire and the Mauryan Empire started after Chandragupta Maurya defeated Defeated. We are not saying defeated, we are saying overthrew. Okay, why we are saying overthrew? Because the last Nanda ruler was a weak ruler. He was not so powerful. So when the last Nanda ruler was overthrewed by Ch uh, Chandragupta and Chanakya, Chanakya was known by three popular names, Kautilya, Vishnu Gupta, Chanakya, you can uh, name him by any of the names. Okay, <sighs> yeah, so where, were, uh, where was I? Yeah, so when both Chandragupta and Chanakya uh, uniting themselves and uh, overthrowing the last Nanda ruler. You maybe know his name. His name was Dhananda. Dhananda. When we speak in Hindi, we say Dhananda. Okay, so uh, it is also a bit uh, did among historians. Okay, so when the last Nanda ruler became the ruler of Magadh, after defeating the last, after overthrowing the last and the ruler, Chandragupta became the ruler of Magadh. This is the beginning of an empire we know as the Mauryan Empire. We are not saying Mauryan dynasty. We are not saying Mauryan kingdom. We are strictly, clearly saying that it is an empire. It was a very, very vast, 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 vast empire. Okay, that is why it's known as empire because it's a very vast area. Okay, from the northwest to uh, to the deep south. Okay, from uh, till uh, okay, we are talk we will talk about that in later videos. But today's videos is all about sources. So let's go for the sources first. And one more thing, in this particular video, I'm not talking about all the sources. I'm talking about just a few sources. Uh, about the remaining sources, we will talk in another video so that it may become clear to you. Okay. So, the major sources which tells us about that period are the Arthashastra by Kautilya, okay? You can say by Chanakya, you can say by Vishnu Gupta, whatever you uh, think is correct according to you, you can say that, okay? So, Arthashastra by Kautilya. Second is Indika by Megasthenes. Megasthenes, uh, we will talk about him, okay? Then we have Ashokan inscriptions. Then we have Mudra Rakshasa. Mudra Rakshasa is a play by Vishakha Datta. Okay, you must remember that. And we have major archaeological sources. So in this particular video, I am going to just talk about till a few Ashokan inscriptions. After that, we will continue in later videos. Okay, starting by Arthashastra. How Arthashastra uh, came into being? What is Arthashastra? Let's look at that. Okay, so Arthashastra by Kautilya. Kautilya's work consists of 15 books known as Adhikarnas. Okay, Adhikarna. You must remember that Arthashastra is a compilation of different texts. 
ओके डिफरेंट टेक्स्ट दीज अधिकार नाज आर द फिफ्टीन बुक्स ऑफ विच द कॉटिलिया कंपाइल्ड एंड मेक इट अर्थशास्त्र मे बी ही कंपाइल्ड वी आर नॉट सेइंग ही कंपाइल्ड ओके सो अर्थशास्त्र इज द वर्क बाय कॉटिलिया कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ फिफ्टीन बुक्स नोन एज अधिकरण एंड द डिविजन ऑफ दीज बुक्स आर फर्स्ट फाइव डील्स विद इंटरनल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन फर्स्ट फाइव बुक्स डील्स विद इंटरनल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन नोन एज द नेक्स्ट एट विद इंटर स्टेट रिलेशन नोन एज अवापा एंड द लास्ट टू विद मिसलिनियस टॉपिक्स ओके वी आर नॉट क्लियर ऑन वॉट एवर टॉपिक्स दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट बट वी कैन रिमेंबर द फर्स्ट फाइव एंड द एट ओके तंत्र एंड अवापा यू मस्ट रिमेंबर तंत्र इज अबाउट द इंटरनल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन दीज आर फाइव बुक्स एंड द एट बुक्स आर अबाउट द इंटर स्टेट रिलेशन now we have a major problem with arthashastra the major problem with arthashastra in considering it a source of history is about its authorship and date you must keep in mind that while we are talking about arthashastra arthashastra is a very old book okay so historians are debating historians are debating they uh, this topic is in controversy that whether 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 it is a work of cotillier or someone else wrote it okay so you must keep in mind there are two views on this on arthashastra there are two views the one is the traditional view and the other is the later view okay so first i am talking about the traditional view traditional view says that that it is a work it is simply a work done in 4th century bc written by cotillier who was the minister of the mauryan empire okay so it is uh, the traditional view is simply that it is a work done in 4th century bc written by cotillier who was the minister of the mauryan empire so this is a simple view jo uh, this view is in every single person's layman's mind we can say okay every one of you whoever is watching they must have a view that cotillia was the minister of the mauryan empire and he wrote this book okay in the 4th century bc this is a traditional view let us come to the controversial thing that is the later historians view later historians says that their view is that that maybe the things that are told in arthashastra are the things that are being taught or held by cotillia you must keep in mind that this is not clear okay we can't claim that arthashastra is a work of cotillia historians are debating on this topic this topic is controversial but we must keep in mind that maybe 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 these things the contents of arthashastra are being taught or held by cotillia cotillia was not the author we can claim we can't claim that he was the author we must keep in mind the other views the later historians views also i am clear till this point if not then please write it in the comment section below moving on the arth shastra states that arth is superior to dharma you know what is dharma dharma is the thing that you do for spiritual well being okay so in every religion there is a code of conduct which you need to perform for being spiritually fit for being spiritually well okay every religion you can go to any okay so dharma is the code of conduct that you need code of conduct that you need to perform in life so that you are good at spiritual level so which means spiritual well being dharma means spiritual well being and kama or kaam okay dharm kaam these two things so arth is superior to both of them what is kaam i am explaining kaam is sensual pleasure sensual pleasure means that everything that is bodily that is worldly okay that is connected to this body that is connected to this world so all worldly things comes under kama and dharma is connected to spirit okay so kaam means body and dharm means spirit so both these things are coming but 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 artha shastra says that arth is superior to both dharm and spirit oh, sorry both dharm and kaam okay so ma you must keep in mind that artha shastra says this okay this is not a statement which you can write 
विदाउट सेइंग दैट अर्थशास्त्र स्टेट्स दैट अर्थ इज सुपीरियर टू धर्म विच मीन्स स्पिरिचुअल वेलविंग एंड काम विच मीन्स सेंशुअल प्लेचर यू मस्ट कीप दिस इन माइंड ओके नाउ अर्थशास्त्र व्हाट इज अर्थशास्त्र अर्थशास्त्र इज इन इफेक्ट द साइंस ऑफ स्टेट क्राफ्ट ओके सो इन द प्रीवियस स्लाइड आई टोल्ड यू अबाउट द फिफ्टीन बुक्स ओके Five of them were about the internal administration, and eight of them were about the inter-state relation. So, what are you concluding from this? Can you conclude something? Yes, ah, uh, you can. You can conclude that it is all about polity. Today we are uh, we are studying these topics under polity, inter-state relation, internal administration. Everything comes under polity. Okay, like this. Uh, every topic like this comes under polity so this is a topic related to polity so we can say that arthashastra is in effect the science of state graph it's a systematic study is a systematic study of state graph how are you going yeah uh, arthashastra is a science of state graph that how are you going to govern how are you going to control your state so when in the time of arthashastra there was not the concept of country there was a only concept that was uh, that is the concept of state uh i hope i am clear this point uh, clear to this point now the arthashastra of kautilya is an extremely sophisticated and detailed treatise on state craft when you are going to study arthashastra in depth then you will see that arthashastra contains everything in a very systematic manner it has the way how to punish anyone who has committed anything in a very systematic manner it has a punishment it has a punishment in a very systematic manner it has a the administration in a very systematic manner it has the taxation in a very systematic manner so these three things or uh, maybe other things are also involved shows us that it is a very sophisticated and detailed treatise on state craft okay okay kangle a uh, kangle is a historian who worked on arthashastra and his view about arthashastra we must consider so uh, kangle suggest kangle is the name of an historian okay you must keep in mind he suggested that vishnu gupta seems to be the personal name of the author who after being insulted in the nanda court wrote this book okay so kangle suggested that vishnu gupta vishnu gupta okay uh, i uh, I told you that Kautilya has three names, three very famous names. One is Kautilya, other is Chanakya, and the other is Vishnu Gupta. So Kangle's view is that that Vishnu Gupta may be a personal name of the author, and his gotra may be uh, Kautilya. I forgot to write that in the slide. Okay, so I'm going to. just give me a few seconds okay so his gotra i hope that this is visible so his gotra was kautilya rp kangle's views is the uh, view is that that after being getting insulted in the nanda court in the court of the nanda ruler he wrote this book and his view is that it was a idealized book it was not about any real state it was just an idealization that how should a uh, how should a state should be governed how are you going to control a state it is all about an ideal condition of an state not about a real state okay okay yes i am clear moving on the next source which is a very very important source is the indica by megasthenes you have heard these names before indica is a book written by megasthenes so megasthenes was a greek ambassador he was a greek ambassador which was in the court of chandragupta maurya before chandragupta maurya he was in the court of an afghan ruler but after a treaty 
which was signed between Chandragupta and Seleucus Nicator. Seleucus Nicator, you all know, if you are uh, studying history, that Seleucus Nicator was one of the three generals of Alexander the Great, okay, who conquered, who has the dream of conquering all the world, okay. So, uh, he was one of the generals. The other were uh, Ptolemy and uh, I'm just forgetting the third one's name. So, these are the Hellenius rulers, okay. Uh, so, Seleucus Nicator sent Megasthenes to the Chandragupta Maurya's court, was sent to the Mauryan court. And as a royal ambassador, his exposure to Indian society must have been socially and geographically restricted. Because when you are going somewhere and when you are going as a royal chief guest, as a royal ambassador, so you are going to see what is limited to the court? What is connected to the court? You are not going to see the condition of the masses. You are not going to see what are the sufferings and what are the pleasures of the masses. So you are going to write about the court. You are going to write about the pleasures of the court. You are going to write about the sufferings of the court, not of the masses. So that is why the historian's view about this Indica is that it is a bit... It is a bit uh, about the royal view, not the view of the masses. So you must keep this in mind. As a royal ambassador, he was only writing, he was only exposed to the social and geographical, uh, uh, geographically, so socially and uh, geographically restrictions to the court. Next is the book Indica based on Megasthenes travels and experiences in India. Megasthenes, I forgot to write, it was the name of a writer. So it should be in capital. Okay, it should, it needs to be in capital. Megasthenes travels and experiences in India has not survived. It was not present today. But we see that later historians quoted the work of Megasthenes in Indica. They quoted Megasthenes at different points in their writings. And what uh, and who were the later writers? Uh, the later writers were Diodorus, uh, Strabo, Ariane, Pliny. Okay, so these were the later writers. If you are uh, copying from this, then please make sure that you are going to write it in capital. I have made it a mistake over here. Okay, so you must not repeat that mistake in your notes, okay? Megasthenes Indica described the country, its size and shape, river, soil, climate, plants and animal produce, administration, society and legend. So it is a view uh, which Indica describes about India. Okay, Indica is the name of the book. You must keep in mind. And it describes about the size and shape, about the rivers, about the soil, about the climate, about the plants, about the animals, about the produce, about the administration, about the society, and about the legends of this country, of this land. Moving on, Indica seems to tell us more about ancient Greek perspective on India than about the history of the subcontinent in 4th century BCE. Why this point is important, I'm telling you. These writers, which we just talked about, talked about, okay, they compared their country with our country. They compared Greece with India in every aspect. So whatever you are going to see, you are going to see a perspective which is more, more, more uh, uh, of a comparison. They are trying to compare everything. So that is why we say that the perspective which we are getting is about the is of the greek people not of the indian people okay not of the indian masses so it is not telling us about the history of the subcontinent Subcon by subcontinent we mean india it is telling us about the greek perspective on india it's not telling us about the perspective of the masses you must keep that in mind okay as an ambassador uh, Megasthenes area of observation. This is written wrong. You must correct this. It was Megasthenes. Okay, you will write that. Okay. 
Magasini's area of observation was limited to the court and the people related to the court. He was not connected to the masses. He was not connected to the masses in any way because he was a royal ambassador. Moving on. The last thing is the Ashokan inscription. And uh, I think uh, I haven't uh, described them well in this video. But uh, in the second video on modern uh, sources, I am going to take a uh, bit on Ashokan inscriptions and then we will move uh, on uh, the Vishakha Dattas, uh, the play that was uh, Mudra Rakshas and uh, the second thing that was the archaeological sources. We will talk about them and uh, with the Ashokan inscriptions because uh, half of them we discussed in this video and half of them we will discuss in a later video. Okay, So when James Princeps succeeded in reading Ashoka's Brahmi edicts, Ashokan edicts are majorly wrote in the Brahmi script. So when he succeeded in reading Ashoka's Brahmi edicts, he was not clear which king they referred to. Why? There is a reason behind that and that reason you must keep in mind that is the major, uh, major, major part of the edicts. They wrote the titles uh, Devanampiya and Piyadasi. Okay. So the title that was used for the king was Devanampiya and Piyadasi. So this made it a bit unclear that who they are referring to these inscriptions who they are referring to who they are talking about are they talking about ashoka so this makes a bit unclear hope minor rock edict which were first found at muski and later at udegolan nitur and gujara they contained they for the first time contained the personal name of the king ashoka which were found at Muski and later Udegolan, Nitur, Gujara. Most of the inscriptions are in the Prakrit language and Brahmi script. Doors at Mansara, Mansera, it is Mansera, and Shahbaz Gadhi are in Prakrit language and Kharushithi script. There are a few inscriptions in Greek and Aramaic as well. So these are the names of the places you must keep in mind. Mansera and Shabazgari are in Prakrit and Kharushiti script. Inscriptions at Mansera and Shabazgari and a few inscriptions are in Greek and Aramaic as well. And a, Bri, uh, and a Greek, uh, sorry. A bilingual and a bilingual Greek Aramaic inscription was found at Sharikuna near Kandhar. Kandhar in Afghanistan is in Afghanistan in southeast of Afghanistan. Ashokan inscriptions were divided in various categories. The two main categories are the 14 major rock edicts and six, in one case, seven pillar edicts. So I hope this video is very helpful to everyone who wants to see the historical perspective of things. Okay, you are not going to claim that Arshastra is the work of the Kautilya after watching this video. You are not going to claim that Megasthenes was the full on history of India. You are not going to say that. And also you must say that Ashokan inscriptions do not contain the name of the Ashoka. The Ashoka name was only found in the major rock edits. Okay. Uh, I hope I am clear to this point. Uh, I hope uh, you watched this video till, till, uh, till the end. And uh, you liked it a lot. I hope. And if there was any mistake. Okay. Leaving these spelling mistakes. Okay. Leaving these spelling mistakes I am saying. If there was any mistake in the facts, then you can please comment down in uh, comment down in the comment section below so that I may correct them in the uh, in my next videos. Okay, thank you for watching this video. Okay.